morning, good afternoon, and good evening, whenever and wherever you are. Welcome back to Peter Plan. Play Planescape Torment. I'm gone. So let's get into it. Let's uh, get some more interesting things going on this time around, I'm shall gone. we? All right. Um, I'm gone. But of course, first it means a little bit of looting, and I Done. probably don't expect me to know which Done. which container holds something again and which doesn't. I mainly remember the Done. interesting characters like this guy around here. This corpse 985 has stopped dead in its tracks, and judging from the condition of its left leg, it looks like it has some sort of tomb rot, or corpse mold has eaten through its knee. The corpse is wobbling unsteadily back and forth, trying to keep its balance. Let's get the corpse a push. Uh, Chief, you might not want to- There's a crack from the corpse's left leg, and the body falls like a dead tree. Its torso strikes the stone flagstones and shatters like a rotten melon, filth and ichor gurgling from the cavity. To your surprise, no one seems to have noticed the corpse collapse. And even stranger, the left leg remains standing where the body was, as if at attention. After a moment, the leg falls over with a wood bump. As you gaze onto the putrefied remains of the corpse, you notice that its left arm seems intact. It has snapped from the torso during the fall and doesn't appear to have been touched by the tomb rot. And that spread for the rest of the body. Hmm, wonder if I can make use of that arm. And yes, you can totally man, this arm can be used as a club. So, if you're ever in need of a weapon in a zombie apocalypse, just hack off the arm of your friend and use it as a club. Please keep Torment says that it can be done. The beta plan wonders if it would really work that way. Alright, this heavily stitched corpse is sh shoveling lazily back and forth between two slabs. The number 4, 5, or 6 has been stitched in its forehead. Why did I say 4, 5, or 6? <laughs> 5, or 6. And the, and the side of its neck. And its right arm. In fact, the skin of mm, the spinning corpse has been sewn up with so many stitches, its skin looks like a bizarre street map. Well, like, let's examine them. Apparently, if I cut mm, the stitches with your scalpel, I can pull out a needle and a thread. And apparently, that room, to your surprise, number 78 has been chiseled into its forehead, which revealed after we peel back the skin. Seems you got two designation there, corpse. The corpse stares straight ahead, oblivious. I'll leave it in peace then. Done. And let's talk to Ivini. You see a slight young woman with pale features. The sunken flesh around her cheeks and neck m makes her appear as if she is starving. She seems intent on dissecting the corpse in front of her, prodding the chest with her finger. Greetings. The woman does not respond, she seems to intend on the body in front of her. As she watch her work, you suddenly notice her hands, her fingers, her talons. They are darting in and out of the corpse chest cavity like knives, removing organs. What's wrong with your hands? The woman makes no response. Uh, she's a tiefling, chief. They got fiend blood in their veins, usually because some ancestor of theirs shared knickers with one demon or another. Yes, you read that right. Some woman or man thought it was nice to go boom boom in the bedroom and making them letters with a demon. I hope for you it was not a demon with spikes, because the others are wise. Yo, that's gotta hurt. Otherwise, I hope it was a succubus. Because you yeah, how was that? Yeah, how was that? Okay, it makes them uh, adult in the head and adult looking too. Tap the woman, get her attention. The woman jumps and whips around to face you. Her eyes are rotting yellow with a small orange dot for pupils. As she sees you, her expression changes from surprise to irritation, and she frowns at you. Uh, greetings. She doesn't seem to have heard you. She leans forward and squinting, as if he can't quite make you out. Whatever is wrong with her eyes must make her terribly nearsighted. You! She clacks her talon fingers together, then makes a strange motion with her hands. Find fret and embalsaming juice. Bring here to Ivy Knee. Go, go, go. Updated my journal. And with that, we have our first little right. side quest. But it doesn't end there. I'm gone. I already said that this episode would be a little bit more enticing. The shambling corpse glazes at you with vacant eyes. The number 821 is carved into his forehead, and his lips have been stitched close. The faint smell of formaldehyde and emanates from the body. So, seen anything interesting going on? As you address the zombie, it blinks in surprise. Uh, what? Wait a second. You're not a zombie. 
Who are you? Updated my journal. The zombie is trying to respond behind stitched lips. He has a peculiar, half frightened, half angry expression. Who are you? What you want? Who are you? The zombie doesn't seem to have heard you. He looks at you up and down for a few moments, then frowns. What you do here? His eyes narrow suspiciously. You spy on Dusty's. You know what? I'm just going to speak normally. Yes. You can see from the language that uh, he has a little bit of trouble with stitchings, but uh, if I would talk like him, you would not be even able to hear what he is saying. And uh, I might just go to him a little bit too fast, so uh, lie. Which gives me chaotic points, if I believe. Yes, I'm spying on the Dusties. After all, I don't know what he is. Oh, well, oh, little lie in order not to make me only enemies. He tells you more intently. You spy? You will sell? Huh? Mord breaks in, whispering, By the powers, this Burke's an anarchist! Posing as a zombie, gotta be the first for those elves, thought. Anarchist? Updated my journal. Anarchist, they're a faction. Mord looks like he's about to let loose a torrent of insults, then notices the zombie staring at you both. Listening intently, they uh, want to liberate everyone from the change of government, tear down the old, establish a new order with no order at all. And uh, my own answer would be, that seems to be contradictory, because it is. And that's uh, what happens with more factions, like Desmen, who are into death, but want you to achieve true death, so you want to have no passion, but their passion is about death. See where I'm going with this? But, seeing you standing in front of us, you know what, a lie, that seems like a noble pursuit. Any anarchist dedicated to such a lofty goal is definitely a friend of mine. The zombie nods at this, as you think you detect him puffing up a little in pride behind his zombie disguise. Uh, so... What are you doing here? Me spy on Dusties. See what I see. Nothing more. What have you seen the dustmen do? Nothing. They do nothing. Can't find nothing. Dead. Dead. Just dead people. Dusties do nothing. Eyes narrowing conviction. Still I watch. I see, there was something I want to ask you. What you want to know. So, um, I'm missing a journal. Have you seen it? Mm, don't know. Some Burke bill you? Uh, what? He wants to know if somebody robbed you. Probably what happened. I'll see. Well, there was something else I want to know. Um, how did you get to look like that? Me good at disguise. Me also got good scars. Me wore lots of them wore lots of embossing fluent. Me make a good zombie. The zombie giggles through stitched lips, then taps his head. Dusty's stupid. Yeah, they're the stupid ones, alright. The sarcasm is evidently lost on the zombie, who nods eagerly. Stupid Dusty's. Me make good zombie. Doesn't that hurt? He looks at your scars. I ask you the same question. Me? It not hurt much. Claps his hand chest. Me. Duff. The disguise is pretty good. Can you disguise me as a zombie? He looks you up and down for a few moments, mumbling to himself, then nods. Uh huh. Mini jar of unbalsaming fluid, pointing at the scars on your chest. And some needle and thread. Well, think about it. I have some other questions, though. And thus we have two side quests for embalsaming fluid and thread and needle. See where else is going? Uh, options. But the game also allows you to do both of them. Because there is enough stuff. If you look everywhere. Like for instance, getting the friend of needle out of that zombie. And that's just something that was lying in a little chest. Isn't this game lovely? Yes it is. Uh, I should stop saying that. I think that this is the third episode where I reiterate that. Um, so, can you tell me about dull? Scribe, shrugs. Scribe, shrugs. Old yellow. Uh, something else? Um... How can I escape from here? The zombie grunts. You can escape from portals. He waves his hand. Poof. And here comes one of the major things about this setting. Something that if you miss this text, you will have no clue further down the game what's going on. Portals? What portals? Portals? The zombie waves around the area. Portals everywhere. Can you show me one of these portals? He is silent for a moment and nods slightly, as if in understanding. Why should I help you? Uh, because I need your help? The zombie gives me a sneer. Everybody needs something. But nobody gives anything. You give me something, maybe I help. And what do you need? Uh, 
You need to get key for me. Want iron key to emboss in your room. Alright, and where is this key? A dusty chit has it. He points at his eyes. She has yellow eyes. He then makes a motion with his hands that reminds you of a pair of cutting shears, blades and fingers. Ah, we already met this lady, haven't we? A dustman woman with yellow eyes and blades on her fingers. I already met her in the embalsaming room. Hold on, I'll be back with the key shortly. Updated my journal. The zombie squints at you. If you're cut, don't say nothing about me. Or me get you in your sleep. I'll be back. Actually, I'll get your damn key, but you had best watch your fret, you hear me? So we have, uh... We can have now three little quests. We can be disguised, we need to get a key for him, and we need to get some stuff for her. All of that right. in just two little rooms. Done. I'm gone. I'm gone. Done. Uh, ah, there is embalsaming fluid. I'm gone. So, we have one embalsaming fluid and one needle and fret. We need two of both, actually. There is two. Now a needle and thread. This container is locked. Well, forced it. We bash it open. I'm gone. We are not a thief. We just use Done. raw strength. And we have strength 16 after all. You will need a key for this door. It is locked, unfortunately. Alright. Um, Will. I'm gone. Let's get on done. first little uh, quests done, shall we? All right. Ivany, you see, Ivany, she's still dissecting the corpse chest with her talons. The rhythm of the talons reminds you of something, but you can't quite record. Watch her hands. Study the motions of her hands. Updated my journal. And voila! That little sound tells us that we just remembered something from our life. Way back in the past, before we died. As you study the motion of Ivany's hands, you feel a prickling along your scalp, and then suddenly you find your vision swimming, blurring, until... You are standing in front of a freshly slain corpse, rigor mortis making a mockery of its smile. The number 42 has been stitched into its scalp, the zombie is lying on a slab, and you have just finished stitching up its chest. You have placed something inside, something that may prove useful if you come this way again. Echo, keep these things safe and wait for my return. The memory of your voice is an echo, strange and hollow to your ears. You cross your arms in front of your chest, and to your surprise the corpse does too. After a moment, its hands fall back to its side, and as it does, the vision fades, until you are watching Ivany's hands make their stitching motions once more. And now we have to find Corpse 42, and, well of course, which is the answer to life, the universe, and everything, but, and Corpse 78, because there was something about him as well. Well, tap and get her attention. She turns, sees you, and then frowns at dumb zombies. She clacks her talon fingers together impatiently, then makes a stitching motion with her fingers. Find fret and embalsaming fluids. Bring here to Ivy. Go, go, go. Give her the fret and embalsaming fluid. No, wait a second. Wait a minute. You make the motion of a key turning with your hand. I need an embalsaming key. Do you have one? She leans forward, looks at your hand, motions, then sniffs. Her hands dart into a rope, then emerges a key hanging from her wickedly sharp index finger. She flicks it into your hands, brings back when done. Go, Updated go. my journal. All right, All then right. first let's bring the key to him, because, and then we will turn to Ivini. Or Ivine. You see the full zombie. You're amazed at the man's disguise. His breathing is so subdued, you can barely see it. Greetings. The zombie quickly glances around as he sees anyone watching, then turns to face you. What? Here's the embalsaming key you had wanted. The zombie eyes go wide and he snatches the key from your hand. He turns it over, nodding all the while. Good, good, good. Now, how do I get out of journal. here? The zombie grunts. You can escape through portals. Who is that? Poof. Yes, we already had the discussion. The zombie nods. You want out? Go to Ark on first floor northwest room. You need a finger bone. Shape of crook. He holds up an index finger and bends it into a crook. When you have key, go to Ark, jump to a secret crypt and can escape from here. Secret escape route. He nods eagerly. You can rest there. Crooked finger bone. Where am I going to find one Updated of those? My journal. He shrugs. There must be one around here somewhere. Look in the storage room and upper floor. Maybe there. Very well. And later on we can come back for him Done. for a zombie disguise. And get some more XP. Because if you're Done. a good role player, Done. you know what you want. And that is lovely, lovely XP to level. And ever better. Well, let's get her attention a little bit. Updated and give her that freak. 
fret and embalsaming fluid. And without missing a beat, Ivy Knee snaps her the fret from her your hands and hooks it around one of her talons, then begins sewing up the corpse chest. She then takes the embalsaming fluid and begins to apply a layer to the corpse. Let's just wait for a while. And uh, within minutes she is finished. She clicks her talons and turns to face you. To your surprise, she extends her hands and directs her talons across your arms and chest. Keep playing zombie. Looks like you have a new friend there, chief. You two need some time together or a... Uh, a stolen mort. As she traces your arms and chest, you suddenly notice she seems to be examining your skulls. She redraws her talons, clicks them twice, then bends forwards and examines some of your tattoos onto your chest. Mm. Oh, right on you. Hivers and hivers do that. No respect for zombies. Zombies, not paintings. She sniffs and pokes one of your skulls. This one bad shape. Many scars. No preserves. Wait. Her talons suddenly hook into the threaten you brought her, and lightning like, she jabs her on another talon into the skin near one of your scars. Yowza! It feels barely more than a pinprick, but it looks like she's about to start stitching you up. Oh, a lot of work. Updated my journal. And voila! Maximum HP increased by one. The sensation is curiously painless as Ivini begins to stitch up your scars. When she's done, she sniffs you, frowns you, then stabs her finger into the embalsaming fluid. Within minutes, she has dabbed your body with the fluid, and strangely enough, it makes you feel better. Let her work. This may be the second time in my life, and thankfully I don't have a nose. Ivan E puts the last touches on your body, gives you another sniff, nods, and then makes a shooting motion with her talons. Done. Go, go, go. And voila! We have increased our HP by one maximum. But we still need an extra thread for this man. We have some extra embalsaming fluid, but we need an extra thread. This copper earring looks extremely old. It looks like it was meant to be worn, but there doesn't seem to be a hook or any means of actually attaching it to your ear. There's a series of strange grooves inside of the earring, however. Examine the grooves. Ah, yeah, that's where we needed that uh, zombie number seven, eight full in order to understand what those... They had a pattern similar to one another. That's a charcoal charm. We need something else. We need... There's some junk. There's what we need. A needle and a thread. I'm gone. Let's go down immediately. Don't want to get that dusty... Uh, I'll give him a chance to see me. After all, it was said that... Uh, Done. Be careful about that. You can see the false zombie. You're amazed at the man's disguise. Yes, we already talked about this. I, uh, you knew, um, how did you look like that? Yes, we already discussed that, but, uh, I want you to disguise me. Here you go. Try to hold still. Can't believe you're going through with this. How barmy are you? Pretty barmy, I suppose. Barmy enough to get 500 XP. The zombie liberally applies the embalsaming fluid to your body, then stitches up several of your scars. Working from your feet upwards, he stitches up. Your scars then finishes the disguise by stitching up your lips. Thanks. Can't you make the stitch on his lip tighter? Throw it, bot. The zombie holds up his hand. Girl fool. Takes him. Talk, pull, stitches out. Ruin the skies. Zombie, no talk. You got to talk. Talk slow. Careful. Understand. Updated my journal. And the zombie frowns. Well, the skies won't last long. A bosom flew and dry up. Stitches fall out. He strikes. Probably not last outside mortuary. And no running. You run, you ruin all the skies. Not again, and leave. But before I walk, look at it. My portrait has changed because I'm wearing different clothes and a disguise. Now, unfortunately, you don't have many opportunities in the game for this, but... Mwah. Mwah. And, of course, 500 XP for just disguise, doing a little bit of carnival act. But uh, yeah, if you want, if I wanted to keep this disguise, I would have to go to gameplay options and put always run off. However, we already know a portal to get the way out of here. Right. So, boom, disguise removed. And All gone right. it is. And we go up here. I'm gone. Because we got a find some zombies. 42 and, ooh, this is gone to worker. That's something different. Hmm. 
Examine it more carefully. Ooh. We can pry out the skeleton's joint bolt. Oh, chief, that's vandalism. These bolts are probably the only thing holding the bag of bones together. Necromancy only goes so far with these old fellows, you know. Ew. So? Oh, it's no problem. Lord does a strange bobbing motion that you think might be a shrug. Just want to make sure if you knew that or not. By all means, go ahead. Oh, try and pry it out. You pull the orange bolts with uh, all your strength, and after a few moments of tugging, you rip the bolts from the joints. The scar that collapses. Some of the bones still twitching. Sorry. Oh, there was a dusty there. Luckily, I have to get a use of that a little bit. Oh, I have leather straps and an uh, iron pike. That's not really that good. Normally, oh, better say, I shouldn't say normally. If you don't have enough strength, you need a crowbar for this, and we will find that later. I, I think it's down in the south room. But uh, yeah, if you don't have enough strength, you need a crowbar for that. But uh, because the screen has been made wider, this dustman is probably just right. out of visionary range, visual range, where normally it would be in range. Oh, we also got a wooden club. So I'm gone. For dismantling that skeleton, we got three items. Very good. But what we need here, I think we need this room. Done. Done. There we go. And there's Done. the iron pry bar that I just talked about. All right. Dustman request. Oh, lock. Forced it. Well, then we just bash it open, and we get some cloth charms. Our first. Somewhat stronger healing item. Nine hit points plus some uh, damage resistance. Also, we get a little note. A dustman request. Contractual worker number 42. We already talked about that. Yes. We already have a note on 42. We need to examine it. We had a memory about him. Are you 42? I can't remember. 70... Was it 78 or 79 that we need? The Fang Circle. Looks like it has been branded on the corpse for a long ago, presumably before it died. It might be a religious icon or some sort on the or rite of passage. You know that one of the recesses between the inner fangs has a small triangle within it, as if it has some special significance. Hmm, I wonder if the space between the fangs matches the groove in the copper earring I Updated have. Updated so my journal. 79 and not 78. The corpse makes no reply. Looks like it's too far gone to answer any of your questions. Maybe so, but we have an earring here that we will use. Insert your fingernail into the notch that makes that matches where the triangle was pointing in the fanged circle you saw on Zombie 79's forehead. Et voila! Some extra experience! You hook your fingernail into the third groove from the top and press it inwards. As you do, there's a click and the top of the earring snaps open. Not only can you s wear, them, uh, can wear the earring now, it also looks like there's a secret compartment inside the earring. Check the earring, see if something comes out. You shake the earring, but nothing comes out. Whatever was in, in the earring is gone now. Put the earring away. Nonetheless, that gives us a hollow earring. And uh, before you, anyone is going to think, oh, well, cool, you can hide something in there. No, no. It, it, it just makes it worth a little bit more, so you can sell it for a little bit more money. Oh, uh, we could pull this thing out of each other. Someone is taking... Oh, no, that's still... Uh, hmm... I wonder if this Greybeard would mind if I borrow his body. Greybeard? You know, Greybeard. Geezer, old fellow, yellow dog, old. Something tells me you would be twice as annoying if you had arms. Let's go. Oh, you're a sack full of laughs, more glares at you. Besides, you're the one to talk, Burke. Mirrors back for mercy when you're around. Oh yeah? Well, at least I have all my parts. Mort snorts. If you're not quite sure how he m he managed it without... Let me tell you, Mort. There's nothing more satisfying than walking around, swinging your arms, breathing the crisp air through the lungs. It's great to have a body. I'll have you know that you're mm, helping you escape. The preparation room has n now been added to my growing list of regrets. Mort snorts again. I should have let you rot. Some more, that is. Glad you feel that way. Let's go. You have been giving me sweet talk about sweet zombie love. Let me give All you a little right. bit of talk about how it's good to have a body. Gone. I would call that equal. Oh, mortuary sanctuary, mortuary, mortuary Done. sanctum key. Wow. I'm gone. I know how to talk English. All right. Really, really good. Some more items, please. Yes, a hammer. It's hammer time. Done. Do -do -do -do. 
And there's a zombie that looks a bit different, doesn't it? But I think that is for the next episode, because the old clock on the wall tells me that I need to go. I say I thank you for watching, and remember, great peril yields great beauty.